mining helium-3 on the moon and sending it to Earth. It would be best to mine and process material on the moon to obtain helium-3, but my question is, what if we did an unmanned mission? A small robot one meter long, powered by solar energy, that takes the material to an induct and heats it to 600 degrees Celsius also powered by solar panels. Once heated, how is the gas collected and how many metric tons approximately could be produced? I assume the resultant helium-3 gas would be transported to Earth via a small rocket and with parachutes and heat shields, the tanks containing helium-3 would land at sea. Is this viable? On Earth, before a mineral or petroleum resource is mined, extracted, the deposit is delineated and evaluated. Briefly, the process involves sending a some geologists and some drill rigs and their operators to a deposit and drilling holes through the deposit on a predetermined grid pattern. The drill cuttings or core, depending on the type of drill used, will be logged and samples taken at uniform intervals for assaying. The logging of the geology will be used to determine the structure and nature of the deposit and the rock surrounding the deposit. The assays will define the distribution of grade, the amount of metal per ton in a given region. This helps narrow down the better parts of the deposit to mine. Should it prove profitable, a mine design is then done and evaluated and if profitable it can then be mined, following approvals, for the moon, or elsewhere in the solar system. This is unlikely to happen because of the expense involved. Technically, getting any equipment to the moon is possibly. It may require establishing a workshop on the moon and sending the equipment as partially pre-assembled parts and then assembling them on the moon, but it's expensive. Satellite or drone data can give an indication of lateral grade distribution but not the vertical distribution that is required for depth of mining. See comments later. If helium-3 is mined on the moon it will essentially be a scavenging exercise. If Wikipedia is correct about helium-3, the grade of helium-3 is very small, 1.4 to 15 ppb parts per billion in sunlit areas and up to 50 ppb in shadow areas. By comparison, on Earth, gold can be mined profitably by open pit methods if the grade is 5 grams, T, or ppm parts per million. Helium-3 on the Moon is 1,000 times as dilute. To mine such a low-grade material profitably would require large-scale mining and processing. Popular mechanics states, digging a patch of lunar surface roughly three-quarters of a square mile to a depth of about nine feet should yield about 220 pounds of helium-3, now 0.75 square miles is 1,942,491 square meters, nine feet is 2.743 meters and 220 pounds is 99.79 kilogram in this situation. The volume of regolith needed to be mined would be 5,328,641 cubic meters. Using a density for the regolith as 1.5 t per cubic meter, something like clean sand, the mass of the dug regolith would be 7,992,961 t 8 mt, and the grade of helium-3 would be 12.48 ppb. The mining of 8 mount of regolith will require a large fleet of robust mining equipment, particularly if the material is to mined at a reasonable rate. Lunar helium-3 and fusion power, published by NASA in 1988 on PP21. 1 to 22 envisage the use of draglines or ballistic miners to dig several small pits per year. Most of the helium-3 occurs in sub-$50 small SF mu dollar m regolith. The mined material would be screened to discard the plus 4 mm size fraction. The remaining sub-4 mm material would be electrostatically treated and then heated to $700 SF carat circ dollar C to release the volatiles. The gas would then be compressed for storage. Use of bucket wheel excavator digging to 3 meters depth at a rate of 1258 th, 3942 h per year would produce 33 kilograms of dollar SF cubed dollar he per year. Heating the regolith could be done by a solar thermal furnace, 110 meters in diameter and 10 meters deep. The evolved gas is subjected to a cooling, condensation process to liquefy the different species. The evolved heas and separate the different species. Cooling takes place during the lunar night to make use of the ambient cold. Hydrogen is removed before cooling. Other gases produced by the process include H20, O2, N2, H2, etc. subsequently cooled to 55K for preliminary isotopic separation and then through a cryogenerator to 1.5K to achieve maximum He3 concentration 99%. The terrestrial mining experience base is large and should be tapped. A specific analog to lunar regolith mining would be mining of terrestrial mineral sand deposits. 
The grade and distribution of ore would need to be known which in turn would require assessments ahead of the miner for planning purposes. The low lunar gravity $SF frac 16 earths may be a problem for the equipment. The machinery may require ballast to achieve the required mass, inertia for mining. Since transportation costs are high, the ballast may have to be supplied from lunar materials. The document goes on to state that given then usage of energy in the U.S., at that time, 600 lunar mining machines would be required P25. Two significant questions raised in the NASA publication were, what is the concentration of He in the lunar regolith as a function of depth as well as its aerial distribution? Why is the He abundance in the regolith strongly correlated with the titanium-4 oxide concentration? Without drill hole data, grade distribution with depth cannot be known prior to mining. Another complication is the topography of the bedrock is unknown. It cannot be assumed the bedrock is smooth and flat. Undulating and or jagged bedrock will be problematic for any mechanical digging device such as a dragline, bucket wheel excavator, or a scaper. It will also reduce the amount of regolith that can be mined. Additionally, the moon's day and night cycles will affect mining operations 13.5 days of sunlight, with surface temperatures up to $127 SF carat circ dollar C followed by 13.5 days of darkness, with surface temperatures down to minus $173 SF carat circ dollar C. Heating the regolith will only be able to be done during the sunlight period if a solar furnace is used. Some more information about mining helium-3 on the moon. As mentioned in the comments, the feasibility of nuclear fusion as a controllable energy source is not yet proven and mining helium-3 on the moon as a feedstock would be very expensive and require a lot of effort and would have to compete with other sources of energy.